Bangladesh make history. Want to watch Pakistan in Test Series. Khaldazia acquitted in five cases. UAE dismisses conviction of 57 Bangladeshis. Newspaper editors want stopping indiscriminate cases. Those were the headlines. Good evening viewers, this is Riti Prova with English Bulletin. Bangladesh have written new chapter in their cricketing history whitewashing Pakistan on their home soil in Test Cricket. The win has elevated Bangladesh in the number 4 spot of World Test Championship. They were showered with congratulations and greetings from the interim government and top leadership of BNP. The Roaring Tigers touched the milestone by winning the second test in Rawalpindi on the fifth and final day on Tuesday. Through the win, Bangladesh clinched the series by 2 for 0 margin. Earlier, Bangladesh resumed their batting with an overnight score of 42 runs for no loss. However, the two openers, Zakir Hassan and Sadman Islam, went back to the dressing room within first hour of the play. Skipper Nazmul Shanto and Mominul Hawk added 57 runs in the third wicket partnership. Later, Saki pairing with Mushfi Cruz, the Tigers home at ease. It is Bangladesh's third overseas series win. Liton Dash was adjudged player of the match and Mehdi Miraz became player of the series. A Dhaka court has exonerated BNP chairperson Begum Khaldazia in five cases. Judges of CMM Court Mahbubul Alumov and Tofazil Hussain pronounced a verdict on Tuesday morning. A.B. Siddiqui was a plaintiff of the case. He passed away four years ago. Khaldazia had been sentenced to five-year jail in Zia Orphanage Trust Craft case and sent to jail on February 8, in 2018. In October of the same year, the conviction had been extended to 10 years after a hearing before the appellate division. Later, the BNP chairperson was handed down another seven-year imprisonment in Zia Charitable Trust Graft case. She had been languishing in a jail in the Nazimuddin Road of Old Dhaka at that time. BNP had always been saying Khaldazia had been sent to jail in false cases under the influence of Amelie government to eliminate her from politics. Fifty-seven Bangladeshis who were sentenced to jail for quota reform movement in Arab Emirates have been acquitted. President of UAE Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan has exonerated them. These 57 Bangladeshis were arrested on July 20 for expressing solidarity during quota reform movement in Bangladesh in July. Three of them were handed down lifetime imprisonment, one 11 years and other 53 of them 10 years each. After Dr. Mohammad Yunus led interim government took charge of the country, they took initiative for their release. Newspaper editors have requested the chief advisor Dr. Mohammad Yunus to take necessary steps in stopping indiscriminate filing of murder cases. They made a call at a meeting with the chief advisor at his residence at Jomuna on Tuesday morning. Contemporary issues were discussed at the meeting that took place for one and a half hour. Twenty editors of top-rated newspapers of the country took part in the meeting. The editors opined that the interim government should be there for a reasonable time. When the chief advisor asked them how long the interim government should be in power, some of them opined in favour of at least two years to make necessary reforms. Besides, the editors demanded cancellation of ICT Act and annulment of oppressive black law against the media. The interim government has issued stern warning against the violators of public safety. The warning was issued by the Home Ministry through a gazette on Tuesday. It said, 
People are enraged over the misdeeds of the last government. However, some overenthusiastic people are ransacking and setting ablaze different organizations, making people to step down under pressure and creating pressure on the police to take cases indiscriminately. It said if there are allegations against individuals that should be registered as complaints through proper procedures. It said action will be taken against miscreants and people enraged in violating public safety. It also said filing of cases do not mean arrest. Information to be properly scrutinized if cases are filed. The Home Ministry also assured the people that trial of all misdeeds of the previous government will take place. Protesting doctors have announced to withdraw their movement from Wednesday. The doctors made the disclosure after observing work abstention from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Tuesday, demanding reform to health safety law. Attack on the emergency of Taka Medical College Hospital and incident of assaulting doctors took place on Saturday on allegation of death of a student due to negligence in treatment. The doctors of all medical college hospitals across the country, including DMCH, observed work abstention on Tuesday, protesting the incident. Although they kept the emergency service operational, the outdoor service remained halted for two hours. That is why the people who came to DMCH for medical purposes on Tuesday morning had to suffer a lot. The doctors decided to withdraw the movement after Director of DMCH, Brigadier General Mohammad Asaduzaman, told them the Chief Advisor has responded positively to meet their demand of making reform to health safety law and formation of health police. Former Army officer Abdullah Hill Azmi claimed he had been held captive in the notorious House of Mirrors for eight years due to anti-Indian sentiment as he is the son of Golam Azam. He was sacked on June 23 in 2009 while serving the army as Brigadier General. Azmi is the elder son of late Jamaat Amir Golam Azam. He suffered enforced disappearance on August 9 in 2016. He got released from captivity on August 9 in 2024 after the ouster of Sheikh Hasina on August 5, 2024. He narrated the horrifying torture inflicted upon him in last eight years to the media through online briefing. He said he desired death every day due to inhuman torture. He called upon the interim government to have trial of each and every single killing and enforced disappearance. He also requested to give back his due honour in the army and called upon the political parties not to pressurise the interim government for polls. Now a short break, we will be back soon with Jamaat Amir calls for unity. Israeli attack kills in northern Gaza. You're watching 18 News. This is English Bulletin. Jamaat e Islam do not have any complaint against any political party. Amir of the party Dr. Shofiqur Rahman made the remark at a views exchange with journalists on Tuesday. He said it is time to take the country forward for getting jealousy and hatred. However, Jamaat e Islam is in favor of trial of specific offense of individuals. Jamaat Amir said there is no scope to look back. Now it is time to move forward, forgetting all divisions. No matter how brutal the truth is, it will have to be highlighted by the journalists, the Jamaat Amir added. A writ has been filed before the High Court seeking probe of Taka 60,000 crore plundering by former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, her son Shodib Joy and niece Tulip Siddiqui. Chairman of National Democratic Movement Bobby Hajaj filed a writ where he alleged that 
This money had been looted from Rupu nuclear power plant through a Malaysian bank. The writ also challenged the sluggish attitude of anti-corruption commission to probe the craft of Sheikh Hasina and a family in Rupur power plant project. ACC chairman and people concerned were made defendants in the writ. A report was published in different newspapers on August 19 over the craft of Sheikh Hasina and a family members in Rupu power plant project. The writ was filed before the High Court attaching the newspaper reports on Rupur power plant project craft. Viewers, we'll take a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching English Bulletin. Now, news around the world. Israeli attack in latest has killed eight people in front of UNRWA school shelter in northern Gaza. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu said he will not give in to pressure as Israelis demonstrate against his government demanding ceasefire deal and captives release held in Gaza. Israeli forces are continuing destructive raid across Gaza, killing wounding several people with children. They have attacked a group of people queuing at bread seller stand in front of an UNRWA school, sheltering displaced Palestinians' Jabalia refugee camp. Before ending the bulletin, the top stories once again.